Hi, I'm Mary or Uncustomary and thanks for tuning in. This is a tapping or EFT session on releasing any fears that you have associated with having a mental illness and the stigma judgments that come with it and like accepting it and this really goes along with my episode 10 video of supersonic self-love. So if you haven't watched that, I highly recommend tuning into that video first, which is linked below, and checking that out and just going through that process first. It's meant to work in conjunction with that. But otherwise, like, let's get started and make sure that you are, you know, prepared. This could be kind of emotional for you and make sure that you're hydrated and take responsibility for yourself before we get started. Um, EFT is emotional freedom technique or tapping, which is something that is designed to release emotional blockages that's combined with acupressure and meridian energy points that correspond to vital organs and positive psychology and affirmations. It's all connected. So all you have to do is tap on the parts of the body that I do and repeat after me. And pro tip, like being as specific as you can helps. So it might be beneficial for you to replace the words mental illness every time I say them with your actual mental illness or symptoms. Just be as specific as you can. It really helps move things along and through you. So drink some water, take off glasses and excess jewelry and... Take a deep breath in and out. Are you ready? Okay. I'm going to start on the karate chop point here. <sighs> Even though I am really struggling with accepting my mental illness as a part of me and all the things that come with it. I still totally love, accept, and forgive myself. Even though some days it feels like I'm stuck, I'm different than everyone else. No one understands me. And things don't feel like they are improving. I still love myself and anyone else who has made me feel insignificant in regards to my mental illness because I am more than my mental illness and it does not define me. Okay, deep breath in. And starting on the top of the head, I have so much fear about my mental illness. I felt so alone for so long. And even now that I technically know what's different about me, I don't really feel any sense of relief. I still feel like an outsider. I don't feel understood. I know they say there's no such thing as normal, but this definitely doesn't feel fucking normal. How am I supposed to accomplish my dreams? with all this extra shit going on. I'm so worried about what other people will think of me. No matter how much I see other people share their stories, I still feel like mine is different. I know I'm my harshest critic but this isn't exactly like a term paper. This is really hard shit. 
and how can anyone really understand what's going on inside my head? Especially when I'm not even sure I understand what's going on in there. I'm so worried about so many things. I don't want people to think less of me. I don't want people to think I'm crazy. I don't want to be perceived as less worthy. I don't want to be left out of things because of this. I've already felt left out for so long before I even knew what was happening. And I thought having the name of what I had would bring me some peace. But I feel like maybe it created more struggle. I don't know what to call myself. I don't even know if I should stand up for other people with my same illness. I don't know if I'm sick. I don't always feel sick. In some ways, I feel like this is totally a part of me. And how can that be wrong? Illness implies that something is broken and it needs to be fixed. I don't want to have to be fixed every day for the rest of my life. I want to be whole. I am whole. I am a whole person. My mental illness does not define who I am. I am more than my symptoms. I am more than my diagnosis. I am more than my treatment plan. I am more than a bottle of pills. I acknowledge that these can be parts of me, but they don't have to be bad parts. Mental illness doesn't equal bad. It means different. I actually like being different. When I think about all the people I truly admire and look up to, they're all different, unique and weird in some specific way. It makes me love them so much. Being different actually makes me come back to them over and over again. Being different doesn't have to be my kryptonite. Being different can be my superpower. I'm allowed to have complicated feelings about my mental illness. I'm allowed to feel different every single day. I know I did not choose these symptoms. But I don't have to let these symptoms rule me. I choose to live and thrive with these symptoms. I am not my mental illness. I'm so fucking special that I got an extra thing. I am kind. 
I'm smart. I'm a good friend. I am beautiful. I'm talented. I have a lot to offer this world. And if I choose to, my experience with my mental illness can be something that I share. But it's not my responsibility to educate people on my illness. I can be as involved with education and conversations as I want to be. I can share as little or as much of my story as I want to with whoever I choose to. And if I choose to share my story, it doesn't mean I want attention. It means I've gotten to a place where I'm comfortable talking about it. And I could actually help other people with their journey. But I also know that it's not my responsibility to do that. It's enough for me to practice self-care on my own every single day. My mental health is going to ebb and flow. Mental health and self-love are not linear. I know I'm going to have bad days. And I am prepared for those days with self-care tools. It's okay for me to be overwhelmed by things that feel out of my control. I am determined to get back up again when I have the strength. My mental illness does not rule my life. I am the only one in charge of my future. I know I can't walk out of the room and leave my illness somewhere else. Which is why I choose to love it. Part of my self-love journey is to love my mental illness. The same way I love myself, my body, and my choices. It may not have been something that I chose, but it's a part of me. So I love it and myself as a complete, entire, whole, beautiful person. Deep breath in and giant sigh out. Okay, that was a lot. You did amazing. And you can come back to this whenever you want to. I know that's a lot to process for today. I know this was dense, so. You did really, really good. I did a poll and it was unanimous that I actually come back and do separate episodes on different disorders specifically. I'm not gonna do them all in a row or anything, but you can look forward to that scattered throughout 2020. I hope that this was helpful to you. Please let me know your thoughts and what kind of resources you would like to see in the future. Thank you for joining me. Be sure to like 
this video and subscribe to my channel for more episodes of supersonic self-love and other fun ways to merge self-love and creativity. And for more resources on self-love, be sure to check out the Uncustomary Babes membership group. I recently added an option where you can actually become a yearly subscriber and save 15% on your subscription and you just make a one-time payment and don't have to worry about monthly payments. So it's a pretty sweet deal. Check it out at uncustomary.org slash membership. I will see you next time, babes. Bye.